believe he's number one. I like to say it's so more good evening, brothers and sisters. That's so more of a greeting, <laughs> <laughs> the personal greeting. So, it's my indie's pleasure, pleasure rather, to be sharing from the word of life, the word of God. I call it the word of life because I believe in the scripture it teaches us um, to, to Christ. That's in Christ, here is life, you know, to despite of what it is. So it's yeah, about life. Amen. Thanks, sir. This evening, I want to talk to you about what it means to be truly transformed. But before going any further, let us pray. Oh, Father, we thank you for all of those beautiful testimonies, especially one from Brother Joel. Um, oh, we had to use our gifts to glorify you and to our edifying of this, each, the body of Christ. And Father, we, I present myself before you, surrender to be used by you this evening. I pray. That you use me as according to thy will. And may everything that I say may reflect grace to the hearers. And Lord, we thank you that in you we can find purpose and meaning for life. And Lord, I pray that you will continue to use everyone here this evening. As for our brother Joel speak about gifts, and may you it was the spirit of the living God that went to them to, to see the gifts that they can use for your work here on earth. And Lord, may you be glorified. May you continue to work in our lives for thy glory, for you both your glory and for our own good. So Father, thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, a lot of us today in the church is not growing as we are to, you know. A lot of modification is being done in many of our lives, you know. What is modification? It's basically like we can basically change something to make it look like some everything is, is changed really. So it's like change on the outward appearance, but in, inside you're still not truly changed. I'm talking about being transformed and um, I think that a lot of people in society even I realize I realize this um before I got saved, you know, like in a relationship with a girl or something like that, you, know, you kind of adjust certain things just for it to work. But the inward part is not really genuine. A lot of, I believe a lot of us in the church is modified in the sense that but we're not truly transformed. For example, I hear a lot of stories about cars. By the way, I'm not a mechanic, but I think the Holy Spirit uses this analogy to, to bring across my point here. He says, I've heard a lot of stories about cars. The external of the car is very much polished and clean, but the internal of the car cannot be seen, so we assume that the car is in good stance. And I've heard a lot of people that they buy um, second-hand cars from ATL and less than a week after it back. <laughs> so it's like, we see, the, we, call, we see the car that is polished and clean, so we assume that the car is in good stance. Yeah. Um, but when we buy the car and put it to the test, start to give some serious trouble and some complication that cause us to, to, to be really mad at times, you know? Mm -hmm. Because we, we, as human beings, I think that we, we, we it's like, let, let me put it in a, a, a man way. It's like, people say men, men are driven by their eyes. I don't know what that is, but whenever we see a female that look good, we automatically think that this girl is good on the individual part as well. We forget the entire inward part of the female and think about the outward appearance. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe that Jesus, the God of the scripture from the Old Testament really said that it does not look at our, um, the man look at the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart. You know, in the church of Jesus Christ today, a lot of modification is being done and many of us are not being truly transformed. I have observed my own life and I've seen some stuff that comes from my own life and others. And I have to wonder if I am growing or not. You know why? Because we fail to deal with our heart issue. So this, morning, this evening I will be focusing on, our, on the heart. I hear a lot of times when people is heading to buy a car, they bring their personal mechanic to observe various stuff to make sure that the car is in good condition. You know that as believers, we need to make the Holy Spirit be that personal mechanic in our life. 
And also, we need godly friends that will tell us the truth where we are in our walk with the Lord currently. Because a lot of uh, it's, I'm a person I kind of choose carefully who I call a friend. You know, because a lot of people in our lives, for example, as Christians, sometimes these people are not adding to our walk. They're, they're taking away from our walk with the Lord. So we need people that point us and even tell us truthfully where we are with our walk with the Lord. We need an accountability partner, someone that will help us to grow. Not someone will keep not someone that will keep our secret so we can sin in peace. Because I believe the world loves to talk about secrets, you know? Because accountability partner is not somebody that keeps secrets, by the way. When you when whenever a person you need a accountability partner is someone that you can, can confess to and that person will able to pray about a part can struggle to help grow through it. Whenever you, you you, you, you have a, a person that you tell you tell your details and then you, you're like it's a secret. Don't tell anybody else. I believe the word any glory glory that in the sense that as Christians we shouldn't be keeping any secret, you know, because secret is is, is basically saying let me sin in peace, let me sin in peace, and don't tell anybody in my business. The world the world loves secret. When I read books like Jeremiah 17 9 and 10, it says. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And in verse 10 says, I, the Lord, try to search the heart, try the, the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And when we read the New Testament now in the Gospel of Matthew, and verse, Matthew 15 and verse 11, it says, Not that which goeth into the mouth defiles a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth this defiles a man. Then we look on verse 17 and 20, says, 17 to 20 says, Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever whatsoever enter in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out in draught. But those things which proceed out of the mouth cometh forth from the heart, and that and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murderers, murder rather, adultery, fornication, theft false witness, blasphemy. These are things which defiles a man, but to eat with an unclean hand defiles not a man. When I read passages like this, it shows that we have some deep, dirty stuff hidden down inside, inside, whether safe or unsafe. You know, un un unless we, we commit ourselves to deal with these struggles, we remain with, with, with these wickedness inside of us. I know Jesus brings us to this passage to tell us that all of these wickedness lies within our heart. And when, when you think about um, why we are, as a country, are in the world, why people can just get up and kill some people, do this, do that, it's because all of these issues is lying within our heart. And it's we, 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 we dig deep and allow the Holy Spirit to show us where we are currently in the world. We will not grow. We will just be modified, modified for, for that particular reason. You know, unless we, we ask God to help us to get over our content contentious lifestyle, adulterous lifestyle, and a life full of anger, these wicked lifestyle, we will not be transformed into the image of God or become more like Christ, which is God's original plan for a person after being saved. We will remain with these wicked struggles in our hearts. Unless we, 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 we seriously say, Lord, this is where I'm at. And because the Holy Spirit of my time, you know, like when some me personally I see that in my whole life. When, when, when a person rubbed me a particular way, I've seen things come out of I me, mean, like surprise, like even my own self surprise. <laughs> so unless we, 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 we ask God to help us to show us the things that are in our heart, then we will not grow as spiritually as God wants us to grow. It's one thing to come here, I'll ch I'm come here to church and just be like, I am growing, but God says, He know our heart. You know where we are currently. So it doesn't make any sense. We hide things from God. It's best we just go straight forward. So God, this is where I'm at. Take me where you want me to be. That's, 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 that's a true act of maturity. Because when God shows you what is in your heart, it's not for us to, to, to get discouraged. It's for us to say, God, this is where I'm at. And that verse from Romans 8 and verse 1 says, Therefore, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. 
who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. It's for us to just realize that God, you know, I slip up. And this is where I'm at. I, I find out this coming from my mouth, this coming from my life. That this must be something deep down inside of me. Help me to, to grow in that sense. And David talk about being purged as Esau. Is, is God want to, 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 to cleanse us? That verse that we, we keep praying that if we want God to truly cleanse us from all unrighteousness, then we must be willing to be open with God. Surrender. Say, God, this is all unrighteousness in me. Open your closet. If it doesn't make sense, you say, God, this is where I'm at. You show him what is out here, but you're not willing to deal with everything over here. God wants us, if we say we want to be cleansed from all unrighteousness, if we truly want to be transformed into the image of God, we must be willing to, to say, God, I'm struggling with this particular thing. I'm asking you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And be truthful, be open to the closet. Because God knows what is in your heart, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, God show you, it's not for you to, to like, press it back down in it, but, <laughs> or anything like that. It's just for you to be open and say, God, this is where I'm going to take it. For this very reason, I understand why David mentioned, mentioned of this. He says, Psalm 139 and verse 23 and 24. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. You know that word, try, that, that, that phrase, try me, can be very hard. If you're going to ask God to try you, you're going to say things really coming from your heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. We have to allow God to do the searching and not ourselves. Because the flesh is very deceiving. I found out myself. It, nobody wants to think that, you know, in, in, in society we like to, to, to classify a particular people. Um, for instance, a homosexual, we kind of think that they are far off. And when, when we're, not, when we're not struggling with, to be a homosexual, we're not struggling to, to be a murderer. We think that we're not as bad as these people. But God, David says, and see if there's any wicked way in me. Once it's not of God, it's wicked. Yeah. Whether, it's, whether it's stealing, lying, or anything like that. Once it's not of God, it's wicked. So whether you struggle with fornication, lying, or anything, it's wicked. And it's simple to, to realize that God wants to force to be open. And to say, God, this is where I'm at. Transform me into the image of your son. I know a lot of us don't like preaching like this because we like to think that we are perfect. Some of us think that we don't struggle, but I'm here to say that those stuff are what the Pharisees think. That, that, are, that, that are what the Pharisees do. They don't like. That is why I think that when Jesus pressed upon them about their wicked lifestyle, they wanted to kill him. Mm-hmm. Because you can see multiple times in Scripture, they say, they go to Jesus, testing him, tempting him, because they want him to, to find him in a trap. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that, that is what. Um, we have to be careful of when when we start to think that we are we are we are we are we are we are we are, we are, we are, we are, we are sinless in that sense. Even though God says He gave us His righteousness, we still have some level of unrighteousness in us that we need to confess to God and work on. They believe that they ha- they believe that they were all clean. When I mean, Christ started to show them up, they wanted to kill Him. And please, I'm asking you, don't kill me this evening. <laughs> Um, Romans 7 and verse 8 says, For I know that is in me, that is in my flesh. Will it no good thing? For to, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. You know, Paul is a man that I believe that is very straightforward and I read his writing. Paul makes it straight and says, There is no good thing built in me. And he's forced to realize that in our walk, the verse that I quoted earlier from Philippians, God, God will for mankind is that a person get saved and in second to be conformed to the image of his son. It's for us not to be um get beat up about when we're struggling. You know? It's for us to realize that God I struggle. I'm I, I was I was born a sinner and he saved me, Lord, and what next? Because this, this verse says be confident of his good thing. It says for us to be confident, you know, in a sense that we must be cheerful, not be down. It says be confident of his good thing. That he which begun, that worked in us, may continue until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's for us not to get worked up when we struggle, worked up when we do something bad. Because I'm telling you, the first time I, I, I remember once I, I, I kneeled down to pray after listening to a sermon. I was praying. 
and a thought come came to my mind. I was like, what in the world that thought I got from? Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, no man, I must be this type of bad person for be praying to the Lord and this come to my mind. Mm -hmm. is, is, is to realize that the Paul is saying nothing good will it in us. We live in a fallen world and, 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 and since, we are, we, since we were once a fallen being, then sinful things will always come at us. It will all come out from inside of us. Because I'm telling you, since I've like started to counsel, I started to say things differently because it's a growing experience in the sense that many people do what they do, like commit murder, do all of these things because they are literally angry and these things have, they have allowed to, to fester in their heart. When you fester in your heart, you take root and start to grow in your heart. I think Pastor quoted a verse from he was um, this morning about that. I, I believe Apostle Paul concluded this Romans chapter. Like this, he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me, deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. We must cry out to God and thank the Lord for his grace, because if it was not for, for the God's grace, we would have get what was coming to us. And it's something that I, I constantly think about. You know, when I was, like, first being exposed to so much violence and doing all of these wicked things, if it wasn't for God's grace, I would have get what was coming to me. And it's for us to understand that. Brothers and sisters, we need to see the importance of being serious about praying about our art issues, our struggles daily. Because you see, our own flesh will ruin us. It's like allowing a particular struggle to, 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 to roam in your life. Roam in your life. Roam in your life. One day it will fly up. And that's what the flesh do, you know. The flesh, as I preached um, a few weeks ago, the flesh will expose you. The flesh loves to expose you. It will expose you. It will ruin us. So it's for us to, to, to be honest with, our, in the, in the, with the Lord and say, Lord, again, this is where I'm at. Help me to be transformed in the image of your son. There's nothing to, 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 <coughs> to come here and, and, and think that they don't struggle. And, 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 and in one sense, too, is that the church is for people who agree that they are not perfect. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I've seen so many believers, like, like when I just got saved, when I, I shared my testimony, it's like, whoa, what is Paul's Labras got saved from? It's like, it feel like, say, whoa, I'm this deep sinner. Like, <laughs> like, I'm far away from everybody else. The Christ was made for people who confess that they are a sinner before the Lord. And if you truly believe that, when you confess that prayer, that you're a sinner, you agree that you once fallen short. And this verse that we need to remember is that, this verse from James, it's in Peter, he says, God resists the proud and give grace unto the humble. A lot of us won't grow. If we are proud in our heart. The, the grace is for the people is to say. The grace is for the people that are willing to say, Lord, I, I fall short. And I need your grace to help me to grow, to change. And this is why I believe Romans is a very good book. Romans chapter 6. It says we shouldn't use the grace of God to sin. But use it to, to be a better Christian you know, in that sense. Because a lot of us we're not willing to say, Lord, I'm I'm falling short. Once you're proud, it will never transform. It will never be transformed. And the Pharisees <laughs> are funny, like everything is in the gospel, like as I'm preaching, it's come to my mind. Like when the two person went up to the, to the, the temple to pray, one of the Pharisees and one of the uh, a publican, he, he, he said, Lord, fuck, uh, have mercy on me. And the Bible said that man went away justified. And this is what the Pharisee was praying. I pay my tax, no, I pay my tithe, I pay this, I pay that. There's no, there was no humility, there was all proud. I can see that the publican was of that, uh, humble in the sense that Lord, it's the Bible said he did not even look up to heaven. He just asked God, have mercy on me. Yeah. And the Bible said he went away justified. And in the church today, I'm saying that if we want to grow, we must agree with God that I'm falling short. And Paul, I believe, it's how we view the scriptures, we can see them as offense because I believe Paul shows so many things in the scripture where he says, where sin abound, grace is much more abound. When we understand that God, Grace outdo all of our struggle. 
and so to change our thing, change our perspective, change how we see God. Because God is never against us. He wants us to, to get to that point of being more like his son. We need to tell, I think, we live in a time where a lot of people indeed need to hear this message. A lot of unbelievers need to hear this message. We need to tell some of the unsafe people that their money or being a good law-abiding citizen might keep them out of jail. But it certainly, certainly will take the blood of Jesus Christ to keep them out of hell. Yeah. I think people don't like to hear that, you know, they like to hear some kind of thinky, thinky message that mm -hmm. they don't feel, my, um, feel that way. Mm -hmm. But they're going to take on, they can keep, like, Jamaica is so corrupt every time you hear that. Like, so many men are to go to prison and they, they pay their money and they escape. But they need to know that it's only the blood of Jesus Christ can keep them out of hell. A lot of unsafe people think being good is okay enough to get, them, to get them to heaven. A lot of them don't want to be transformed, but I believe and stand on the authority of Jesus Christ that he says, except a man be born again, he can never see the kingdom of God. And this is not God being any respect of person. God put his standard and he will never go back on it. Yeah. We need to let these people know that because I think I, I am a person, I'm very observant. I've seen people that start this church before me and up to now they have never trusted Jesus Christ as a person and Savior. God want these people to know that except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Because I am a husher and, and, and sometimes you see some unsaved people that are willing to throw every money out of their name in the offering basket. Because some old people that I think that being good is good is okay enough with God. But Jesus said, except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. You know, having been going to counseling, I started to see stuff within my heart that I realized that I need to be praying and being intentionally about my relationship with God about. We need to be intentionally about our relationship with God. You know why? Because I believe life in itself comes with a lot of busyness. You have this to do, that to do, that to do. And sometimes you don't remember your, your simple relationship, your simple Bible time, your simple prayer time with God. And I, I've talked to so many people that they said, um, work is stressful, work is stressful, work is stressful. There's a theologian who said this, I, don't, I won't forget it. He says, it will be hard for a person, if you don't find God rather, in the early morning, it will be hard for a person to find God throughout the day. It's like, if you don't start off with God in the morning, and you go up there and face any hardships, people will be a certain way, and you never start the day with God, you're going to, you're going to ruin the entire situation. Mm -hmm. If you know your work is stressful, spend some time with the Lord, seriously, because God wants us to be intentional about our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You know, for some of us, like, we live in a pastor living in this book to read about relationships, and I see we're people, when you come on to relationships, you know, like husband and wife relationship or boy, boyfriend and girlfriend relationship, people can get so intentional about these things. When you come on to the relationship with God, we keep forgetting that we need to set a time, set, a, set apart time for God if we, are going to be, if we are going to grow as Christians. And a number of divorces and a number of these breaking relationships could have been saved if people were being truly transformed. A lot of us are not being transformed. And even in the book, I found out that Hollywood tells us that we need to try to find the right person, but God wants us to be that right person. We need to, 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 to search within ourselves that we need to, to be intentional about our relationship with God if we are going to grow spiritually and reflect life. I believe as a people of God, we need to hear more messages that convict us of our sins and tell us that we need to be more like Christ in this fallen world. Because there's this verse from Philippians. I don't remember exactly where it comes from. But it says um, about being reflecting Christ in this progress and this crooked generation. Christ wants us to reflect him in all circumstances, whether at work, in hard things. And only way we can reflect Christ truly is by dealing with the issue of the heart. Is truly confessing our sins to God. Because about that verse, again, I can't stop remembering that verse. It says, if we confess our sins, it's faithful just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
all of us were born sinners. And if we agree with God that when we come to salvation, then we must be willing to want to, God, help me to be more like you. You know, some, sometimes I, I, I like, I hear some preachers, like, I hear some names, and sometimes I just like, okay, I'm going to listen to some of these guys and see what they're really talking about. I remember turning on to one on YouTube and started to listen to him. And like, like about 10 minutes into the sermon, I'm like, well, this is a sermon. And I see why a lot of people will listen to this. Because it's still talking about, what well, God wanted to do this in terms of being a better person. He's not talking about sin, no. He's talking about, <coughs> it's so easy to fall in these traps, when, especially when you're not rooted in the word about, God wants to show love. God wants to do this. God wants to do this. And not turn it to deal with the internal part. That all of us, that verse from Isaiah that says, all of our, all of our righteousness are like filthy rocks. They're not telling us that we, are, we, are, we have some things to deal with in our life. They're just trying to make, like, everything is okay with you. The only thing you need to do is work on yourself. Work on this, work on that. But you're not being truly transformed. You're being modified. And I've seen it myself, like, when people rub me a certain way, I've seen things come from me, like, make me really shocked. That God wants us to, to be truly transformed. A lot of these motivational speeches, a lot of these motivational speeches are motivational speakers. Are, some people call them life coach, you know, because that's what they are, you know. We need to avoid them. I've heard, I hear, I've hear a, lot of, a lot of these speakers it's more about being modified than being truly transformed. It's more about being good than going to be more like Christ. A lot of people don't want to hear that they need to be more like Christ. People like the good, feel good messages that doesn't really make them feel like they need to, to be grow. Because we really find any human being that love challenges. I mean, God is going to help us to be more like Christ. He's going to rub us. And, and it's when, 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 when God serve and preach, it's false when, when God when the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin. It's was false to say, Lord, I was convicted by this. What am I to do? Simple, like Apostle Paul. What, what should I do? I think why people don't like these messages is because a lot of us don't want to reorganize our life. It's like we're setting this particular way. Like, <laughs> I know, last, last, a week ago, I hear a pastor was preaching about, um, I could identify it. It's like, I've talked to so many people and like, though the person might be unsafe, but I like this boy, I like this girl, I like this. It's like you're stuck in your way. And because the flesh desire it, you want to stuck in that way. But when, when God, man's preach, God, and, and God convicted of something, God, want, God is saying that you need to reorganize your life. Come and check with me. You have an appointment with me. We need to, we need to willing to, to say, God, change my heart. At the time we sing that song, God, change my heart, oh God. That song is go deep with beyond what you think it is it's saying. Because if God is going to truly change your heart, we have all to get some, some real hardships, some trials. Even persecution, people don't like people always make it seem like persecution is all that bad. But I believe during the midst of persecution we can be more to grow to be more like Christ. I, I you know Whenever you take a stand to look at some of these churches, I started to think if the church really belonged to Jesus Christ, you know, or if it belonged to a man. Because many of these churches today, it's not about a man that went to the cross. It's more about a man that stand up on the um the stand up behind the podium and say anything out of his mouth. It's not about a man that purchases the church with his own blood. It's more about a man that stand behind a pulpit and say whatever he wants to say. And people buy into these things, you know. I believe the church is more about Jesus Christ. So we take a look at the scripture. For example, in Acts 20 and verse 20, it says, Take ye therefore unto yourself and to all the flocks, over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer, to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. This verse was written to pastors directly. When some of these preachers preach watered-down messages, our, our itching ears messages, our preach what people want to hear. You love so many modified people full of the churches. And not, pe not people that, that are transformed, which is to be more like Christ. And I believe that when you check most church temperature, it's, it, it's made up of people who are modified. 
some of them, some of them are not safe. Some of them are just modified. Some of them are not truly transformed. They're just modified and are not safe. Because I believe with all my heart, when you read the scripture, and you understand certain things, if God saved you, I think it was all about love for God that you want to serve him despite of what's going on. If 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 we, if we really say we are transformed, then serving God will come easy. If we pour out your life easy, and you, I'm telling you, like sometimes like people say um to me like Wilton, yeah, there's so much things like, I mean, I don't even feel burdens so about it. It was you know, like what God do for me. I want to show him that level of appreciation. And, and I believe that God, when God saves you, and you read the scriptures, and I see what God saves you from, it changes your entire perspective about life. I think we, we should not support, as a people of God, we shouldn't support none of these people that preach any itching ears messages or any modifying messages. Because I, 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 even Joel Osteen, uh, uh, what's this? Video with, 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 with some people critiquing him. And, 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 and uh, it was live an interview, you know, so it's not like I'm not seeing the interview. It says to him, Is Jesus Christ the only way to heaven? His response was like, I went to India and I meet some good people, so I, I can't really say. Mm -hmm. Like a simple question like that is yeah. he, kind of beating around the bush. Like, I will still run and support these guys, or buy their books, or buy, buy the, 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 the CDs that they sell. I will still support these guys. I think we shouldn't be supporting these guys as a, as a people of God. Because these people do not preach that we need to be more like Christ. They're teaching about being modified. And from that book that they write about having your best life now, what, what, are, telling the what are they telling people if you're saying that you're truly a pastor that God called to preach his word? No Christian will have no best life now. In, in, in a literal sense, when we come to Christ, we understand it, it is our best life now. Oh, his best life now is focusing on being rich, being this, being that, being successful. And there was another interview, and Oprah, Win Winter Oprah Winfrey interviewed him. She said to him, like, why does he preach about hell? He res his response was like, you know, I don't preach about hell because life is already tough on people, and whatever, whatever. <laughs> I was like, what in the world is he saying? <laughs> and then we still support people like these. I, I mean, not only him, others beside of him. These people just keep robbing people of their money. I will still support them. Yeah. And 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 seeing of this guy that come on, um, seeing enough, seeing an interview with this guy, Clifford Dollar, and, and he was saying that God laid on his heart for him to purchase a private jet, but cost sixty-four million dollar US. I mean, that's a lot of money, and he got the jet. I believe. When you think about that. That can't reflect God. And, and, and he, the, he, the news even go beyond and interview people. That's how the world is, you know. They love to embarrass. Once you call yourself a Christian and you represent God, the news love to embarrass you. They go behind and says to some people, and you see some people that are giving their last dime to these men. And these men does not really have any regrets about that. You know, before, just before I close, I want to close with this verse from Proverbs. Sorry, sometimes when I'm preaching, I, I think that <laughs> I don't know where to find the book because I'm nervous. Yeah. Proverbs 4 and verse 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You know, our heart is like a pit. Everything stores there until we get everything out. Until we, um, I like to use this analogy. Until we, we make God be that plumber to clean our heart, which is a pit. All of these debris and stains and every other thing is going to stay there. So it's for us to realize that we need to, to be open to God. Confess our sins. Confess where we are. Just be playing with God. If you can't be playing with anybody in your church, be playing with God. Say, God, this is where I'm at. You know, help me. That's what God is into. When, we, when we're not willing to, 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 to confess to God where we are, we won't get that help. As I close, let's just allow... Or was, let, let us not rather allow our struggles to define or identify us. Let us show to be identified as a committed father of Jesus Christ, which is serious about going to be more like Christ, which is serious to be more transformed and be modified.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for who you are. Thank you for showing me in your word that his wickedness is from within us. So many times, Lord, we give so many. We put so many pressure on the devil to say, not knowing that these wickedness that we do come from within us, which is our own flesh. Oh, Father, I pray that this evening that you help us to crucify the flesh, mortify it, Lord, put it to death. And Lord, I pray that every believer, everyone here tonight will just be honest with where they are in their walk. Starting tonight to be intentionally about our relationship with you. So we, be, so we may grow to reflect you in this world, in this fallen world. Lord, I pray that you help us to, to, to just be simple, obedient, and humble, and confess to you that we are falling short, and we need your grace. I would thank you for that blessed hope in, in Romans chapter 5 and verse 20 that says, Where our sin did abound, grace is much more abound. So Lord, we thank you for that grace that is outdo all of our struggles, outdo all of our sins that we can do as believers. Lord, I pray tonight that we just be sincere in our hearts, just to confess. Confess. That's what we did when we came to know you first. Lord, it was just sincere to confess, be open. Lord, in Psalm, your word tells us that your night unto them that call upon you, but those that are called upon you in truth. So, Lord, help us to be truthful, sincere in our heart. Confess. In Jesus' name. Amen.